reason I'm, he's, I want him to come up and speak now, he has to get home, otherwise he's going to get a divorce. Because he came here today to say a few words, and it's his wife's birthday. So if you want to sing happy birthday to Dorothy, let's all sing it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dorothy. Happy birthday to you. That gets, that gets him somewhat off the hook. Now I'd like to present to you the very best we've ever had, Sheriff Rick Bradshaw. Thanks, Rick. Actually, I'm really going to get out of the doghouse because I promised to take her to dinner tonight, so I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get by with that. It was really important for me to come here for two reasons. One, to see old friends. You know, I love coming down here to make sure that you feel safe. And, you know, a lot of people that I talk to says we really do, and that's important to me. But more than that, you know, this is an important election, and I don't think anybody understands the gravity of what's going on here. We've got to have somebody like Mary Lou. Most importantly, you know why? She's the most qualified. Just by virtue of the fact that she has the institutional knowledge. You, you can't learn that in a day, in a week, in a year. You have to be along in that process to understand how this county works, the importance of the budget process, and the system. You can't just all of a sudden one day say, you know what, I, I think I can do this, and you're going to go do this, and that's what some of the opponents you know, want to say. She's got the knowledge to do it. But secondly, and more importantly, I need people that support the sheriff. I need people that support my budget because that's how I take care of you in these communities, is having enough funds to do it. And I know that she will support me. The reason I know the other guy's not going to, he's made it pretty clear. He's already supporting my opponent. So not only does he not like the system the way it is, he thinks there ought to be another sheriff too. So if he gets in there, you think he's going to help me out? To help you out? I doubt it. That's why you've got to get out here. August 14th is important, and Mary Lou is important. She's important to you, and she's important to me. Thank you very much. As, as we go around, I look around here and I see some other people have walked in that you may or may not know. One person I think that you, none of you know, uh, he's a newcomer, uh, somebody that uh, you may have heard his name mentioned around here, Irv Slasberg. Come on up, Irv. Irv's incognito today. Thanks, Bert. Um, listen, I'm just dressed like uh, one of our schleppers, right? It's, uh, uh, luckily, uh, fortunately for me, and unfortunately for me, um, I, uh, my district changed. And my district changed um, in that I'm not uh, going to be representing Century Village in Whisper Walk because they took away can't do anything about it, uh, and they took away west of the west of the turnpike. However, everybody always knows my my office is going to be around the Kings Point area, and everyone always knows that um, they can count on me, regardless of if I'm at the Kings Point area or if I'm over at the Century Village. You guys always know uh, that I'm on your team, and uh, I, I really love 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 working for you. And I loved uh, working with the, with the whole team, with the whole political team. And, and I know today we're here uh, for, uh, I guess it's Mary Lou and the Sheriff. Is that who we're here for, Bert? I think it's Mary Lou. Oh, okay. Uh, we're, we're here for, we're, 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 here, we're here for the community. That's who we're here for. You know, really, when, when you really think about it, we're here for the community. And I feel very, very confident in uh, Mary Lou Berger that she will uh, take um, whatever the commissioner has given her in her head and move with it, and she will make sure 
that she takes care of the community. So I urge everyone to vote for Mary Lou Berger. And, and, and you know, everybody here knows I'm not the kind of guy who's a yes guy. And I'm not the kind of guy to stand up here and uh, Bert says, hey, Irv, come on over here and give Mary Lou an endorsement. I really believe in Mary Lou Berger. I really believe that she is going to do a great job for the community. And this has nothing to do about who she's running against. I know Mary Lou. Mary Lou is right for the community. So I urge everybody to go out there August 14th and vote for Mary Lou. Yeah. And I love you guys and I'm going to miss you guys. Here's Bert. Wait a second. One thing Irv didn't mention. Irv mentioned to me the other day and he remembers when we had the hurricane. And we had the hurricane. And Herb and I and Mary Lou, all of us worked for you during the hurricane, getting sandwiches, water, ice, and everything else. So let me tell you something. You've got to bring home the people who helped you. And Herb and I reminisced about that many, many times. We may have another hurricane. Hopefully we don't. But you want to know something? If we do, you need people in office that know what to do, and that's the most important thing. Mary Lou, thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity. You know, I've been with you guys for like uh, 12 years, and um, I, I just really want to thank you for the opportunity uh, for uh, you guys electing me, uh, because I really love my job, and I really loved working for you, and uh, thanks again, I really appreciate it. Now, I'd like to bring up another unknown. Really, truthfully, he's very, very new on the job. He's down here from Washington. Our wonderful Congressman Ted Deutsch. Ted and I were at the uh, convention yesterday down in Fort Lauderdale. You probably heard about it. And Ted was supposed to be this this morning speaking on at certain caucuses and uh, I'm just going to let him tell you why he's here. Good morning everyone. It is, uh, it is great. I have a whole lot. All right, that's better. It is, uh, it's great to be here. I actually, uh, I was, Bert's right, I was uh, down at the Diplomat yesterday for the Democratic Convention there were some meetings this morning. There were some other things that were supposed to be going on that my staff had scheduled me for. Uh, but I couldn't miss the opportunity to be here this morning. Yeah. I couldn't miss, uh, you're, you're right. I couldn't miss the opportunity for, for two main reasons. One uh, is that I never miss an opportunity to have a chance to come and, and speak with the people who give me the opportunity to do the job that I, I do, to represent all of you in Washington. So let me start first by thanking all of you for giving me what is the highest honor that I could possibly imagine to represent this community in Washington, D.C. Second, second, I don't want to miss this opportunity because, uh, because of what's, what this race is about. Uh, you know, Commissioner Aronson, as you may know, has been around for a little bit. He's, uh, he, he's had a, a dramatic impact on the quality of life that we enjoy, uh, on the way that the, the community interacts, on the way that people here in the village and at Whisper Walk and at Kings Point and all throughout our, our area, uh, the way that they're able to enjoy life because of so many of the things that Commissioner Aronson has worked so hard for during his career uh, in the, in the uh, County Commission. And so now we're at a, a point where we've got an election coming up uh, where we have to decide how it is that we're going to be able to continue down that path. How can we be sure that all of the things that the commissioner has fought so hard for, uh, all of the efforts that he's, that he's made to make life a little bit better here in our community for all of us, how can we be sure that that's going to continue? You know, I go up to Washington and I stand and, and I fight efforts to privatize Social Security and Medicare and fight cuts to, to health care and fight those who want to increase your prescription drug prices. That's what you sent me there to do. All the while, What's really important is that we have elected officials here on the ground in Palm Beach County representing this community to make sure that we can live the kind of life that, that we all moved to Florida for. That's what Commissioner Aronson has done for all of the years that he served us. 
Now we have an opportunity to make sure that we can continue down that path. And the best way that we can continue down that path, the best way that we can ensure that we'll have the same kind of commitment to our everyday lives, to the things that matter, to making sure that all of our needs are met, is to elect Mary Lou Berger as our next county commissioner. That's, that's what we have to do. I, 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 just, I just want to say this. You know, there are, there are a lot of reasons that I... Where is Mary Lou? There, there are a lot of reasons there are a lot of reasons that Mary Lou is going to be a great county commissioner. But I, I want you to know, this isn't something that, that I'm just showing up out of the blue to talk about. For, for as long as I've been involved in politics, whenever there is an issue that's come up, when we get a phone call in our office, when I get a phone call in my state senate office, when I was in the state senate, when we get a phone call in our congressional office, and it has to do with something here in Palm Beach County, the first thing we do is call Commissioner Aronson. And with all due respect to Commissioner Aronson, the, the person in his office who is as knowledgeable about all these issues as he is, the person who really works to make sure that these things get done, and I can say that because this is the role that, that Wendy has played in my office. When I'm in Washington, she's on the ground making sure get, that, that everything gets done. The person in Bird's office who's been sure to work tirelessly on our behalf already for all these years is Mary Lou. Now we have the opportunity to, to elevate her into the position of county commissioner where she will have a powerful voice on all of our, all of our behalf uh, as long as she serves in the county commission. This is a really important opportunity. I want to urge everyone here in the strongest possible terms to support Mary Lou Berger, to give her the opportunity to continue the great work that Commissioner Aronson has started, and to make sure that we can all continue to have the kind of the kind of enjoyment here in Florida, in South Florida, in this community in Palm Beach County, uh, that we all enjoy so much. That's why I support Mary Lou Berger. One, one last point before I leave. Uh, I don't like, this, this, for me, this is a race that's really about qualifications, and that's what I touched on. And I don't love having to talk about uh, having to talk about some of the things that happened in political campaigns that I wish we didn't have to address. But I want to just talk about one thing. One of, one of Mary Lou's opponents in this race has tried to inject religion into this race, has suggested that we ought to be discussing religion as part of this campaign. Now, I don't know about you, but as someone who me and my, my parents especially spent so many years fighting to make sure that every decision that's made in our society is made on what's in the best interest of people, that's made on what in the best interest of people's qualifications, to ensure that we look at issues and tackle them in a way that's based on quality, that's not based on, that's not, that's not based on religion, that we fought so hard to separate church and state, and here's someone in a political campaign who wants to bring religion into a political campaign where it doesn't belong, we can't tolerate that. It's the wrong thing to do. I hope it will stop. But I want all of you to know that the thing that's going to make, that's going to ensure that all of us continue to succeed in what we do here in the community and making this the wonderful community that it is, the one thing that we're going to, we're going to be able to do has nothing to do with, with religion. It has nothing to do with, uh, with any of the, the qualifications that people are born with. What matters in this race is that we have someone who is smart and talented and committed to this community and has worked tirelessly in this community for years. We'll continue to do so. That's Mary Lou Berger. I am proud to endorse her, and I will continue to come out and work with you to make sure that Mary Lou Berger is our next county commissioner. Thank you very much. In case you haven't noticed, Ted is afraid of height. He had to get down on the ground. He gets very nervous standing up here with a small edge. But I will say this. You know, every time I hear Ted speak and say things about me, it's like listening to a eulogy. I'm glad I'm hearing it while I'm alive. Okay, I, I want to do something right now because some of them have to get back to work. So before we go bring any other speakers up here, and there are other speakers that want to speak on behalf of Mary Lou and others, I would like our famous Pipe and Drum Corps to come in here and give us a rousing, rousing Scottish cheer. You 
drive. Mary Lou worked for, for four years. 
So basically, Mary Lou has 23 years of county government experience, and as the sheriff said, what you need is somebody with experience. And as Irv said, you need somebody with experience. And as Ted said, you need somebody with experience. The fact of the matter, she has far more experience than I had at that same time. So the fact is, you want somebody with experience. On top of which, take a look at me, okay? Do I seem in good condition? Little do you know, no, I'm really in good condition. No, I'm really in good condition. The fact of the matter is, I'm not going anyplace. I'm going to be as active as I've, as I've ever been. I'm going to be active with Mary Lou. But you want to know something? Now, I'm going to have, let me tell you a story. I asked her if I could come to work for her when I'm out of office. Because I'm allowed to. She turned me down. You know why she turned me down? Because I can't use a computer. So I'm not going to work for you. And that's the end of the story. The fact is, she's the most qualified. But I've served you people at Century Village for 20 years. And I'll tell you something. With no leadership here, with Marvin and Stanley and Mike and the entire staff, how many of you remember Temple Torah Or? The battle that we had trying to keep Temple Torah Or. We kept it. We made everybody happy. We made the Homeowners Association happy. We made the administration happy. We made the Levies happy. And we made the people that Torah taught. I have claimed that my greatest accomplishment in my 20 years in office has been the saving of a temple. Temple Torah Law, right here in Central York. We also, the monument, if you remember outside, for the Holocaust victims, had to go through special permitting through the county. So my relationship, and many of you know the story, that my mother lived at Century Village. My mother lived at Newcastle C. I have a special affinity for Century Village, and that's rubbed off on Mary Lou Berger over all of these years. It is rubbed off on her, and she's been working on the right turn lane in, the traffic light at Cumberland, all of the things at Century, the water problems that you had here, the window problems that you had. You know, no county commissioner is an island unto himself. No county commissioner could do everything. I get all the credit, which I love. I do. But the fact of the matter is I get all the credit, but my staff, I have three staff members, Vivian, Megan, and Mary Lou. And you know something? When you call up, and you all call up, who do you get on the phone most of the time? My staff. And who follows through on everything? My staff. And the head of the staff is Mary Lou. There's not enough I can say about her. And, you know, I'm waiting to find out whether or not, uh, let's find this out. How hungry are you all? Stanley. Are we almost there? I guess not yet. Okay. A lot of stuff is coming in, so just give me a few more minutes. The most important thing is, what do we need the most in this community, in this county? The thing that we need the most of in this community, in the county, is the safety. The sheriff already spoke. You know what we do with the sheriff's department. But did you notice the guys in the yellow t-shirts? They're your paramedics. They're your paramedics. And they're here today, some of them with their children. And you know why? Because they know that Mary Lou Berger will fight. How many of you followed the paper the other day when I came up with the vote to put three men back on a truck over here so the people here would be safe? Did you read that? Well, we did. And part of that is because Mary Lou Berger looked at the budget and found a way to show that we could take money out of reserve to be able to fund them so three men are on a truck so when you need somebody, 
you have three people coming. And you know why you have three people coming? The first thing that happens, how many of you have had to call 9-11 have paramedics come? Come on, don't be ashamed. I did too, so raise your hands. We make over 3,000 calls a year at the Century Village. First person comes in. What does that person do? Goes to the next of kin to find out what kind of medications, what they're taking, all the things that are necessary. The next guy goes in and takes a look at the patient and starts to try to stabilize him. And the third man on a truck is the one who goes in and out and he brings all the equipment. If you only have two men on a truck, something's lacking. And then if you have a cardiac arrest, a real bad cardiac arrest, if you only have two men on a truck, one's driving and the other's taking care of the patient. And if it's a very severe cardiac arrest, one person taking care of that is not enough. That's why we fight for three men on a truck. Now you've got three men on a truck and say, I helped it, Mary Lou helped it, and we got the county commission to allow it to happen, and I'm very proud of that, and she should be, be very proud. And that's why you see all the men in church. Because they're the ones that save our lives. They're the ones, I've had many occasions, not many, I've had two occasions where my blood sugar dropped very low. Paramedics came, took care of me, I was fine. So ladies and gentlemen, the sheriff, the paramedics, and now I'm gonna call up on a young man, he's not that young anymore. Being a paramedic, he ages fast, but I wanna call up AJ. Come on, AJ. Thank you very much, Bert. Hey, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but the firefighters, we have a nickname for uh, Bert. We call him the uh, pit bull. He's one of those guys that you can pet him. If you ever know what a pit bull is, you can pet him and pet him and pet him. They'll lick you to death. But if you ever get them a little, little mad, and they get a hold of you, they don't let go of you. So that's a nickname with the firefighters we call But first of all, I want to thank all of you for coming to this, because I brought the firefighters that work at 53. Can you guys stand in the back of the room? firefighter we're proud to serve all of you so I want to tell you thank you very much for supporting us and also Mary Lou 100% supports the firefighters 100% and also Commissioner Harrison so who's um, supported us 100% also they are true loves of our, our lives and also they in, in the back room the firefighters they truly love love the Commission also some of the, some of the things I wrote some of the notes down on here some of the things that are important is Mary Lou's work. Oh, they're a little closer to me. Some of the more important things is Mary Lou has been in the office with uh, Bert Aronson for 18 years. She knows how the process goes. She knows what the needs are. And she has grown with her community. So those are some of the things that we as firefighters have looked at. Also, some of the other things is we have endorsed her with the firefighters without hesitation. Just because we know that her number one issue is to protect all of you. And to protect you, she has to be able to protect our staffing levels, like Bernie Aronson was also um, implying earlier. And with us, with enough manning on the trucks, we can make sure that you guys get 100% care. And that's what, that's, that's, to my, the best way I can explain is, that's the number one issue with us, is to take care of you. It's really important. <laughs> the other thing that's really good about Mary Lou, she always has an open door policy. She comes to all these meetings, she always says hello to everybody, and also we as firefighters can always um, vent our issues to her, and also you as the public can vent your issues to her also. The other, some other things too, and I think one of the congressmen also brought up, there was an issue that came up. When, us as firefighters, you call us, when we show up, we don't ask what religion, what sex, what creed, or anything. One of the candidates that is running against Mary Lou, brought up religion. Now when I got hired as a firefighter 20 years ago, also my captain that works and floats all over the county, I don't ask people, hey, what religion are you? What color are you? How much money do you make? There's nothing that we ever ask. If we ever did something like that, immoral, unethical. A candidate that went against Mary Lou brought religion in. 
Religion to, to all of us means nothing. We all have separate ideas and separate views. But I think I'm appalled and the firefighters are appalled with that issue. So last, last thing of everything, I want to just tell Mary Lou, thank you very much for being you, Mary Lou. Thank you from the firefighters. Okay, now let me tell you the truth. You know why we have, why we have the firefighters here today? Not to Mary Lou. We know that when you have lunch, some of us have a tendency to overeat. We have a tendency, sometimes we stop ourselves a little more than we should. And as a result, I think it, you know, I don't want to have any problems here today. So we'll bring the firefighters here. You guys have the pumps ready, the stomach pumps. They have all the stomach pumps ready. They have everything ready. You know, I joke about this, you know. For those of you who have been here with me for over 20 years, you know I have to make light of some things. You know, while, while I've got the sign to stall, I'll tell you some stories, okay? Mrs. Cole one day goes down to the greengrocer 20 years ago. 20 years ago, she goes down to the green... Hold on, I don't want to interrupt that lady's phone call. Uh. She goes out to the greengrocer and she says to the greengrocer, Mr. Schwartz says to the greengrocer, Mr. Cone, Mr. Cone, do me for 10 cent burgers. <laughs> Mr. Cone turns around and says, look, Mr. Schwartz, you've been in this country 30 years. Can't you once say, give me for 10 cent beach? She says, Mr. Cone. When they gave Budden Young, that's the beach. What my daughter wears around her neck, that's the beach. And when I go to visit my son, and my daughter-in-law looks through the window, she says, here comes the old beach. Put me a table, give me for 10 cent buttercups. Okay? Now for those of you who don't understand English, let your neighbor explain it to you. How many of you understood what I said? And you can tell as a Brooklyn boy, I was not very learned in Yiddish. I mix it a little bit. You ever hear the story, Myron Cohn's famous story? Two men. Stanley? Not yet. Okay. I, keep on. I may see four or five numbers, I don't know. Just give me the sign when I can stop, okay? Okay. Tell the story. Story? Two partners, the inside man, the outside man. They go down, they hate it. But how many of you were in the coat and suit business? No. Okay. All right. For those of you who may know the textile business and the manufacturing business of coats and suits on 7th Avenue in New York City, two partners, the inside man and the outside man, they hate one another. But they always go to lunch. So they go down one day for lunch, they go to Glugsterns, they sit down at Glugsterns, and one says, the waiter comes over and says, what are we going to be? The outside man says, give me a steak. The inside man, who always watches the money, says, if he's going to have a steak, I'm going to have a steak. So the waiter comes and brings two steaks. Inside man takes the piece of his knife and fork, cuts a piece of steak, and puts it in his pocket. The waiter says, None of my business, no question about it. But why did you take that piece of steak and put it in your pocket? He says, You see that son of a bitch over there? That's my partner. He hopes I choke on the first bite. It's something bad. <laughs> And this is all part of training of being a county commissioner. We go through a course like this every single time. And Mary Lou has learned all these jokes and she'll be able to tell it to you in future years. Hey Bert, did you teach her how to sing? Did I teach her how to sing? Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start 
We have all the food stamps? Okay, so now let me call up somebody who is running for property appraiser, a good friend of mine. Somebody that I think that you ought to hear more from. Somebody who has the ability to become, I can tell you one thing, he's not going to lower your property appraisals, but he's going to do the job. If it deserves to be lowered, he will lower it, and he will do a job second to none. A good friend of mine, Bob Weinberg. Thank you, Commissioner. Can we have a round of applause for Commissioner Aronson, please? Okay, I'm not going to be very long. I don't want to stand between you and the food. When I wanted to get up here today, again, my name is Robert Weinroth, as the Commissioner said, and I'm hoping to grow up and be your property appraiser. So I hope that you will do me that honor. How many people have voted? Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Those mail ballots are the greatest way of doing your, elect, your uh, vote. If you haven't applied for one yet, think right now what you're going to do if there's a monsoon on August 14th, or a hurricane, or you have a headache. And if you haven't voted yet, please consider sending an application in, and I've already voted. It's done. I voted for myself. But I also voted for that young lady over there who I'm going to talk about in a second. Please, 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 it's important that you vote. You've seen those yellow tickets going around. These are important people that you need to support. But Mary Lou Berger is the person that we're here today for because she is essential to our district. You know, this is the only district that there are no mayors, there are no city councils, there's nobody there to call when you have a problem. This is all unincorporated Palm Beach County. That's been our mayor for the last 20 years, right there. Herc Aronson has been the mayor of District 5. Anytime you had a problem, you called the mayor, and then the mayor told Mary Lou, fix it. And Mary Lou knows every person out there the day she gets in office, she will know every person to call immediately. You don't have to worry that first day, has she found her office yet? Does she know how to get her paychecks? Does she know how to call people? Does she know who to call? Mary Lou probably tells the commissioner who to call. And that's why it's so important that we elect Mary Lou as our next commissioner of District 5. And that's why I'm here today to tell you this is the woman that needs to be our next commissioner and you have got to support her. Thank you, thank you. Please remember to vote. We have a very, very good ticket this year. Mary Lou is going to be the most important person on that ticket, but there are other people on there. We've got to take care of this ticket. Thank you very much. I saw it before I let them bring the food out. And I want honesty is the best policy, correct? So some of you said you voted already. I want those who voted already to tell me whether or not they voted for Mary Lou, the Sheriff Bob, and so on. Raise your hands. And those of you who didn't. Because if you raised your hand and you didn't, you don't get a sandwich. <laughs> I mean, that's a fair way to do things. No, seriously. If you have voted and think that you made a mistake in your vote, you have the opportunity, if you vote absentee, to get that ballot back and vote again. So if you think that we have made a case for who you should vote and you voted the opposite way, you do have an opportunity if you so desire. Anyhow, without further ado, Somebody that I've come to really, really appreciate. Appreciate the work, ethics, and knowledge. Somebody that's been with me for almost 19 years now. Somebody who knows you as well as I do. I'd like to bring up your next county commissioner, Mary Lou Burke. Who's also afraid of me?
I don't know about you guys, but my stomach is eating its way to my backbone. Are you hungry? Yes! I know you are, so I'm not going to keep you very long. I've gone around to almost all the tables and spoken with you, and so many people, from Congressman Ted Deutsch to the sheriff, to candidate Bob Weinroth, to the firefighters, to Herb, and to the commissioner have spoken about me. I can't add a whole lot to that. But I do have one very short point that I need to make with you. There was a comment made a little while ago about religion. And let me tell you a story. When Commissioner Aronson was first elected, I was working for Dorothy Wilkin. And she came into my office and said, I need you to go upstairs to the 12th floor. I need you to ask Bert Aronson if he's bringing a family Bible or if he needs me to supply a Bible. And I went upstairs to the 12th floor. There was no one in the county commissioner's office except for Commissioner Aronson. He was all by himself, sitting in a chair at his desk, looking out over the intercoastal and the ocean. There were no pictures on the walls. There were no books in the bookcases. There was nothing there but the commissioner and one picture that was directly across from where he sits. And that picture is still there. That is a Norman Rockwell picture. And on that picture are the likenesses of every race and every religion, male, female, children, rabbis, nuns, priests, Muslims. Every culture was there, every religion. And down in the corner of that picture, it says, do unto others. And it was at that time that I realized the kind of man you elected to be your county commissioner. And I have worked for 18 years to learn the job, to follow the commissioner and to live by that creed, do unto others. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. I love all of you. I want to be your next county commissioner and I am ready to do that and I am ready to do unto others. I want to thank my hosts, Marvin Manning, Stanley Siegel, and Mike Limongelli. They worked hard. I'm very happy you're here. I'm hungry. You're hungry. Let's eat. There's one thing that Mary Lou didn't tell you, and I just want to finish it up with this. She said to me, Commissioner, I know you're going to take everything down from the walls, but I'd appreciate one thing if you gave me a present. Leave that picture for me, and I am leaving that picture for Mary Lou, so she will have that as a reminder every single day to do for all, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Thank you very much. Let's have lunch, and then we'll have a little fun afterwards. Thank you. Mike, come on up. Marvin, come on up. These people have been working for Century Village with me for years and years and years, and many of the things that we've accomplished is because of these three people coming up here today. They deserve a tremendous round of applause from the people of the Century Village. First of all, thank you very much for coming. Most importantly, I can't see one reason why we shouldn't get a 100% vote for Mary Lou. We are in the unincorporated area. We have seven people who sit there to make decisions. And the six people who are there, where we're number seven, have to respect, have to respect the person who sits in our seat. And there's only one person who's running where I know for sure that is respected by the county commission who sits there, and that is Mary Lou. We must vote for her, please. Okay, thank you very much, and, and let me say to you all, uh, we're concerned, we work for the village, and uh, for me it's been a, uh, a labor of love, and I want to thank you for your response to uh, our efforts all these years. Okay.
Okay, so how does the coffee? Okay, if you hang around, we're serving dinner. How many want to stay for dinner? How many want to invite me to their house for dinner? I want you to know something. We don't have a stove in our house. My wife turned it into a planter. And our refrigerators now are safe. So, I guess most of you do the same kind of cooking that she does. Anyhow, I want to thank you once again. This may be the last time that I'll able to be addressing you as your county commissioner. There may be one other time, I hope so. But let me say this to all of you. It's my honor and my privilege, and I will always consider each and every one of you in Century Village as my personal friends and hope that we have long life together, each and every one of us. I thank you so much for the opportunity to serve you. And with that, God bless you, God bless the state of Florida, God bless Century Village, and most of all, God bless the United States of America. Thank you.